Oh, hold on. There's got to be a better way. So unless I'm very much mistaken, this should be a five inch metal bandsaw from Warco. Let's see what we got. Bar with a thread on it. I wonder if that's the uh, sort of limit for the stock for the repeated cuts, maybe. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's too much to assemble. It's pretty much ready to go. Right, let's get it out of the box and see what we got. So it comes with instructions and some bits of plastic with their extra handles or maybe the stop around here and then this threaded rod. So it's a desktop portable bandsaw. Brilliant. So a popular option, especially for hobbyists, is this horizontal bandsaw. It's pretty cheap, gets the job done. And I've had my eye on one for quite a while, but I haven't got much space in this shop. And uh, I've always thought, you know, maybe it just takes up a little bit too much room. So I resort to using the, the hacksaw. So a few months ago, I was browsing the Walco website and I found this. So I thought about it for quite a while. And then recently they had a 10% off weekend. Well, here it is. Okay, let's have a look at the electrics. Here you've got your normal on off switch. At the front you've got the variable speed that goes from 1 to 6. That obviously controls the blade speed. So the low speed will be for steels and then the high speed will be for aluminium. And then when you want to start cutting there's a trigger here on the handle. And then to plug it in you've got the standard UK plug. And mechanically the first thing you'll notice is this big bracket here. So that allows the whole saw to swing round and then you've got a readout down here in degrees. And quite a nice little feature here, you've got this specially shaped little cam down here so that you can get that dialed in and always bring it back to the same zero when you want to do a normal 90 degree cut. And to lift it up and down you've got this little pin here that just engages in the housing that keeps it held down. Pull the pin out and you can raise it up and put your work in. And when you come back here, obviously we've got the vise that holds the workpiece. One of the nice features about this saw is it'll cut up to, in vertical mode anyway, 125 millimeters, which is about this size. So that's a pretty big cut. And if you compare the maximum cut you can do on the four and a half inch model, which is the bigger, more expensive model, uh, it'll only do 110 millimeters. So pretty impressed with that. Having said that, the motor itself is only 400 watts and on the bigger saw it's 550 watts. So time will tell how we get on and how well it does. On that note, um, if you do overload it, there's a little uh, press to reset here. If you overcurrent it, that will trip out and then you can reset it there. And then you also got to take your time, go a little bit slower and ease up the pressure. Some of the other differences are obviously this is it's not uh, automatic. It's only fared with your hand, so you've got to keep the pressure on it all the time. Finger on the trigger to make it run, and you cut all the way through. Um, so it's hand fed, and you haven't got an automatic cutout, and so you've got to be here all the time. Whereas with the bigger model, uh, it'll feed via gravity, and when it gets to the bottom, it just stops. Having said that, there would be ways to work around that. You could hang a weight of just the right amount on here, just to keep the work feeding down, and then you could put a strap around the trigger to keep it on. Go off in the workshop, do something else, and then when it gets to the bottom, obviously it wouldn't cut off, it would just sit there spinning and you'd just come back and switch it off. Yeah, so there's options. So in terms of blades, this one comes with a 12 TPI carbon steel blade. You can get a higher quality bimetal blade as well and there are other pitches available. But we'll see how we get on with this and then take it from there. Well, I guess we better plug it in and see if it runs. I should also mention it comes with this little safety light down here so when you switch it on the light comes on then you know it's ready to go and if you squeeze the trigger the blade's going to move otherwise you wouldn't really know it was about to go. All right, we'll go to it on the lowest speed settings this is about 40 meters per minute and uh, let's see what happens.
Okay, so as you can tell there, it's also got a soft start on it. All right, let's try it at the maximum speed. All right, that seems okay. Now it also comes with these four little feet, which look like, I guess they just clip into these corners. stable. Uh, they do recommend you bolt it down in three places. So there's one here, one at the front and one on that side. So I'll work out exactly where it's going to go in the workshop and how I'm going to orientate it and then we'll do that. And while we're around the back here, we'll just show you, this is how you change the belt. So you've got a couple of screws to take out, take this little plate off and then you can change the belt out. I'll point out also these wheels here, uh, metal wheels, I think they might be cast iron so they're not just plastic. So there's quite a reasonable quality there. And then also I'm guessing there's no lockout switch if you take this off, so you could run it without this on, though obviously that would not be a very good idea. The okay, last piece to do is just put on the adjustable end stop, so you get this bar here, the thread on it, and a lock nut, and that goes into there. I'll be easy without that in the way. And then you've got the stop itself. Now this does look like it's plastic, but it's pretty thick. It's ABS, so it's reasonably impact resistant. And we'll see how we get on. And then it's got a clamp system at this end that allows you to clamp it on. And probably, yeah, you can probably have it out of the way as well and put it on like that for your repeated cuts. Let's see how it clamps up. okay. Well, I guess we're about ready to plug it in and cut something. And we'll start with this piece I was looking to cut out earlier. Switch it on. Speed to lowest setting for steel. And I'll bring in a little timer so you can see how long it takes. And we're ready. Oh, hold on. Here come the ads. Do you need to saw wood? Do you need to saw plastic? Do you need to saw electrical cable? Okay, maybe not that one. Then you need a saw. Available at all these retailers. And anywhere that sells a saw. Ah, we're back. Right. Uh, while you're away watching those ads, I've just adjusted the blade guide as much as it will go to give maximum support. So let's start the cut. Let's have a look how we did. It's a little bit warm still. So there it is, straight off the saw. It's not too bad. Now normally you put this in the lathe and then machine that back down again, but that's certainly pretty good. And then that's the comparison of last time I cut it with a hacksaw. That was not fun. So how long did it take? Well, 
I did move the camera around a little bit, so we probably lost about 10-15 seconds. So let's call it somewhere between four and a half to five minutes to cut 40 millimeters of that mild steel bar. Certainly a lot better than using the hacksaw. There you have it. That's a quick overview of Warco's. Hang on. There you have it. That's a quick overview of Warco's five inch portable bandsaw. So as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.